Testing. Testing, one, two, three, check. One, two. Testing. Testing. Check one, two. Asparagus. Asparagus. Okay. Okay. Testing. Hello everybody and welcome to Henry's Kitchen where today we're going to be making how to make a waffle without a waffle iron and uh, I actually do have a waffle iron but um, somewhere okay. but I'm gonna teach you today how you can do it without without having to uh, to have a waffle iron um, we've got a lot of work to do today there's a lot of steps in this recipe I think it's eight steps total which is not insignificant um, so you know roll up your sleeves get your gloves out whatever you need to do um, but we're gonna be doing Okay. A lot of cooking this morning, but we're going to be having some fun. I've got some games lined up, and uh, well, my Henry's Kitchen game, and and some songs. So think about some songs that you might want to hear uh, while we're waiting for our waffle. Um, one thing I'd like to get out of the way right away, uh, and that's that um, one of our viewers, Sean Staggs, uh, says that his wife, Caitlin, is uh, having a birthday today and um, so I, birthdays can be very dark and difficult times in people's lives and uh, Caitlin and Sean I just want you to know that okay. uh, everybody here at Henry's Kitchen uh, is thinking about you and our thoughts and prayers go out to you during this time uh, so happy birthday Caitlin and I hope that you guys uh, um, can make the most of it Let's talk a little bit about waffles. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank a couple of the people that are subscribing. I'm not going to be doing it uh, in real time, but I do want to say thank you to uh, Gaming Jacob and um, Can Rum okay. and uh, Mr. Bitster, uh, Cock Liverino, Del Maximum, uh, who raided the party. Thank you for that. Um, 1976 Gibson Grabber, Grabber Best Bass, Julia, Julita B. Uh, Sun Sulu. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I really appreciate all the support, and uh, most of all, I'm just happy that I can teach you about cooking because 
as much as it's one of those annoying things that we hate doing and it's not fun and a lot of times it can be very taxing on our emotions. Okay. Thanks, Decurions. Um, and our, uh, our mental well-being, it's something that we have to do. It's like eating your vegetables, you know. It's, you have to do it, um, but hopefully you don't have to cook it. So uh, let's talk a little bit about waffles. Um, the word, and this is from wikipedia.com, the word waffle first appears in the English language in 1725. Okay. It is directly derived from the Dutch word waffle, which itself derives from the Middle Dutch. Okay. Waffle. While the Middle Dutch waffle is first attested to at the end of the 13th century, okay. it is precedented by the French waffleur in 1185, both from Frankish waffle, honeycomb, or cake. Um, waffles remain widely popular in Europe for the first half of the 19th um, century despite the 1806 British Atlantic naval blockade that greatly inflated uh, the, pr the price of sugar. This coincided with the commercial production of beet sugar in continental Europe, which in a matter of decades brought the price down to historical lows. Within the transitional period from cane to beet sugar, Florian Ducher formalized a recipe for the Brussels waffle, the predecessor to the American Brussels waffle, a recording the recipe in 1842. Sorry, I'm almost done here. Stroop waffles. There's a lot of history about waffles, apparently. Stroop waffles rose to prominence in the Netherlands in the middle of the century. However, by the second half of the 1800s, inexpensive beet sugar became widely available. It starts to go into some other stuff, but I do know that the uh, there's always been a dispute about whether the French or the Dutch created the waffle, and uh, there was a centuries-long war going on between the two of them. Uh, maybe not a, a typical war, but a cold war, which I believe is still going on till this day. So let's take a look at some of our, well, let's see if you have any questions here. Uh, someone asked how you say it in French. I think it's waffle. Um, waffle. Uh, Hyde White says, I love waffles but can't make them as I don't have an iron. Thank you for this tutorial. Okay, yeah, you're going to be very happy by the end of this tutorial. You're going to have a waffle without a waffle iron. Um, USB1, hey Henry, is it true that the term blue waffle comes from waffles being covered with blueberry syrup? A blue waffle? I would imagine so. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that term. Uh, Gigasoy, how do they have a big enough fridge to keep the war cold? That I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I see. Zodbane says, aren't waffles hot? Yeah, there's a little bit of confusion here. Cold War is a war that's very tense, but uh, it's not actual people in the battlefield fighting so I guess it would be a little bit like uh, the silent treatment or the cold shoulder you might have heard of um, passive aggressive comes to mind uh, sweet cakes says waffles are my favorite I don't have a waffle iron what would you suggest I use instead well that's what we're doing we're that's what this class is uh, Jesse has gifted 10 subs. Thanks, Jesse. Um, no, I died. Daddy says my dear grandmother used to give me sugar. Her ashes hold a place of honor in my front yard flower pot. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started and let's take a look at uh, some of our ingredients here. What we have is 
one teaspoon of baking powder, which is here, uh, one and a half cups of milk, which I don't have milk, but I have some cream left over from when we made our stroganoff. So uh, we're going to go ahead and use that. I think that you can water um, cream down or it'll just be a little bit creamier. I'm not sure. But uh, two eggs. I have one egg. So what I'm going to be doing at, at, as a, a matter of uh, sort of uh, emergency, I'm going to have to um, divide all the ingredients by two because I only have one egg left. So we're going to be making, but that's probably good because this is this is supposed to make 36 waffles and I'm not going to eat that many waffles. So uh, two cups, but you can store waffles. Uh, so we've got flour to taste. We've got butter. And we've got sugar to taste. And I think that's it. So uh, there, we're going to use some tools. I've got another camera set up because I'm going to have to go over to the oven. So this is another uh, view here. These are going to be our tools. We want one large bowl to mix our wet ingredients, one soft bowl to mix our dry ingredients. We've got our cups, our spoons, and a whisker. And again, I've, I've said this before, this is not, these are not 100% accurate, but so we're going to be eyeballing it a little bit, but Either way, we're going to be dividing all the ingredients. So there's going to be some math today, unfortunately, but we'll we'll get through it. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and um, start out with our first. Uh, let's see here. If I'm missing anything. Doesn't look like it. Uh, yeah. A lot of complaints about the math, and uh, yeah, math is a, is a part of cooking, but I use Alexa, so Alexa, what's one-third of a cup of flour? One-third cup of flour weighs about 1.5 ounces. Yeah, so you've, you've always got math that can be, uh-oh, we seem to have a, a cat who's awakening right now, so let's go ahead and... Uh, See what's happening there. Um, sorry, everybody. Uh, yeah, the um, the roast beef cam I was actually going to use uh, for our for our um, stove here. So I'm having a little bit of a camera issue, but we're going to get through it. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's let's go ahead and get started here. We're gonna take. Uh, we're gonna start with our dry ingredients here. Um, I feel like this could be a, a little better focus, maybe. Not sure. Okay, so what we want to do is start uh, combining our ingredients. We're gonna take. Um, two cups of flour, but remember we're dividing everything by two, so that'll just be... Alexa, what's half of two cups of flour? One cup. Okay, so that worked out evenly, which is nice. Shit. Oh, God. All right, so I put way too much in here. Okay, so I over poured, so I'm guessing that the amount that I had in here would make up what the deficit is on this cup. I'm hoping, but again, these things are not accurate anyway, so it really doesn't make a difference. Um, next up, we're going to add our, okay. uh, let's see, we're going to add sugar and baking powder. So for sugar, we're going to, our recipe asks for half a cup, but we're going to do, Alexa, what's half of a half a cup? 
I think it's one quarter. According to an Alexa Answers contributor, half of a half is one quarter. I almost put it in the sugar. I've got an identical sugar. Okay. Try to make sure that all of your ingredients in your kitchen don't look exactly the same. See, the problem is I can't get my hand into this thing. That's about all I have here. I'm just going to put the whole thing in there. It's about one quarter of a cup. Okay, and our baking powder, we want one teaspoon. That's easy. Just grab this. Oh, but I got to divide it. <laughs> oh, well. I... Okay. Thanks, adjusting my threshold. Now let's go ahead and stir this up. I um, was listening to a podcast once and they were talking about how if every American saved one dollar a day, they would... Uh, by the end of one year, they'd have something like more than $300 or whatever. And it sounded weird to me, but I checked out the math. And the math worked out. And I was thinking, man, all these Americans just living paycheck to paycheck. And they could be saving so easily. Uh, it's really a problem. I'm going to see if anybody has any questions here. Somebody says, uh, if, if, if I don't have sugar, can I use shingite? I'm not sure what that is, but uh, as long as it's sweet, that's really the only, uh, that's the only thing you need to, I mean, you could put a sweet potato in there, I guess, theoretically. All right, Phantom gifted five subs to viewers. Thanks, Phantom. That's very nice of you. Um, so... Let's go ahead and uh, let's see if. Oh, we, we might have some roast beef activity. Okay. He's uh, seems to be going into this uh, box, and I guess uh, he's probably going to stay there. So not a lot of stuff going on with the roast beef situation. Um, so maybe there's more excitement happening with our dish here. Um, all right, so we have our dry bowl and this seems to be pretty well mixed. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on our wet uh, bowl. So we're gonna add our milk, butter, eggs, and we're gonna whisker it. So butter, Okay, for the milk, again, we're using cream, and normally where we would want one and a half cups of milk, we're gonna do three quarters. I don't have to do that, math. And if you're following along at home, uh, if you have regular milk, then you can use regular milk. Okay, so uh, we're going to add in our one egg. Gotten pretty good at doing that, fortunately. Okay, this is trash. Last thing that we're going to need to add in terms of wetness is our butter, of which we want uh, two tablespoons of butter, but we're just going to be using one tablespoon of butter. I don't know if you guys know this about butter, okay. but they always have on the side the, um, thanks, Force and Mom 1276. Uh, they, they have measurements. So I'm going to take just one tablespoon. Um, normally I'd use some kind of a knife or something, but I'm just going to 
again, just kind of guesstimate. Uh, let's put this butter back. We don't want it all melted. Regularly consume water. That's a cool title. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start mixing this up. The butter uh, was nice and soft, so that worked okay. out. A lot of times if your butter's too hard, it'll stick to your whisker, and it even kind of did here a little bit. But uh, you just want to stir it best you can. I mean, look, all any of us are doing is trying to do the best that we can on a daily basis. And it's okay. not always going to work out great. But uh, certainly we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. I've had good days, and, and you guys even saw me a couple of, about a week ago, I was really in a down spot. I had COVID. I was trying to make cloud eggs, and they didn't freaking whip up, which really pissed me off because the, the recipe said it was going to be so easy that a child could do it. And uh, it didn't happen for me, but uh, that's all right. You, you get up the next morning, you plod your weary way to the kitchen, and you try to do it all over again and um, I don't know I'm feeling good today I'm all done with my COVID which is nice and uh, I'm feeling good and it's Sunday brunch we're gonna have waffles we're gonna sing songs and play games and answer some questions what do you got here um, so uh, bingo handjob says sometimes when reviews fail I get suicidal yeah don't 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 go into that dark place. Hide white too. I think I needed to use an extra whisk for cloud eggs. That could be. Yeah. I've seen those machines, you know, and, and I even have one, but one of the whisks doesn't work. But okay. So I'd say for the most part, we've got our wet ingredients stirred. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put pour the wet bowl into the dry bowl and we're going to whisk some more. Um, now, I'm going to take a little bit of what you call um, executive uh, privilege in this case because I have two bowls. I have one that's got wet ingredients, one that's got dry ingredients. The recipe is telling me that I need to take okay. the wet ingredients and pour them into my dry bowl that's going to combine them. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work, but I also don't see any reason since I have a smaller dry bowl why I couldn't just take the, the smaller bowl and put it into the bigger one. That's going to make it easier for me to stir. So sometimes when you read these ingredients you want to add also your own common sense. So yeah, if I poured this in here I would only have this much to work with, but I'm going to take all of our dry ingredients okay. Bingo hand job, just subscribe. Um, okay, so now we're going to go ahead and stir everything together, and this is going to become what we call the batter. And uh, I, overall, I'm kind of uh, okay. feeling good about this. Codex of Dye Fat. Subscribed. Okay, I will tell you right away that this this is too um, too uh, solid. So I'm gonna put a little bit more of our cream in there. Again, we're doing stuff on the fly. Okay. You want it to be loose enough to pour. Cracker, just subscribe. Thanks. All right. So if you're just joining us right now, what we're doing is we're making waffles. We determined that waffles were uh, claimed to have been invented by the French and the Dutch, and it's currently starting a war, or it's been a, a war that's been going on for centuries, but it's still going today, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, okay. also we had wet ingredients and we had dry ingredients, extraterrestrials. Thanks for joining us. We had our, our bowl of wet ingredients and dry ingredients, flour and sugar and shit, plus eggs and whatever, milk. And uh, now 
We combined those two things and we're whipping them up into a batter. And we're getting flour all over the place, unfortunately, but that's very normal. Uh, did I put salt? I don't remember if I put salt. Okay. Mormon Jeezy. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. We're we're done with our batter here. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna have to uh, do a little bit of. Uh, by the way, I hope you okay. have your coffee there with you. Gold saucer exec. I'm gonna now be needing to set up um, this other camera. Hmm. So bear with me here. This is a little bit of a technical challenge, but I think it, I think I'm up to it. Um, here we go. What the hell, man? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, we got it. All right, cool. All right, here we go. This is going to be kind of cool. This is... Uh, this is uh, called a grill pan. It's not a waffle iron. It's a it's a pan, but it's got ridges on it. But if you if all you have is a regular pan, you could certainly do it that way. So we're gonna light this up to about maybe maybe seven is good. And we've got our batter here. So all we're gonna be doing simply is uh, that we're going to be taking our batter uh, sorry I'm reading at the same time we're going to be pouring the batter on top of the grill pan and we're going to let it sit for about five minutes so here we go uh, you want to generally speaking you want to uh, Boy, this really is not pouring. I probably should have put more stuff on there. Uh, you you want to leave it on there until you see bubbles on the top. That's sort of the rule of thumb. Man. Okay, this is a pain in the ass. You might have to use whatever kind of tool that you have at your disposal. This is a spatula, which seems to be working fairly nicely. Uh, uh, sorry, hopefully you can hear me. I'm, uh, I'm a little far away from the microphone here. So let's just kind of pat it down. And that's going to be our waffle. We want to try to make take up as much real estate around the pan as possible. But there you basically have it. Okay, so again, we're going to leave that on there until such time as we see bubbles on the top, which will probably be about five minutes. And then that's when it's going to be time to flip it over. Um, and you want to cover it as well. So I'm just taking literally an, another pan here and I'm covering it up. Okay, so we've got that going there. You can see I've got my camera covering that. Um, uh, NIMBY says, I, I think I beat my batter a little too hard and now it's solid like a rock. What should I do? Beat it less next time. Yeah, you don't want to beat it too hard. I would say, if, for whatever reason, my batter was very uh, solid. So I think I could have either used more milk or maybe it's the fact that I'm only using the one egg. 
But either way, I think we figured it out. Um, someone asked, uh, Beelzebi asked if I did the painting of the flowers in the back. No, I was actually um, at a thrift shop and I was trying to think of a nice backdrop that I could use uh, for my kitchen shows and that one looked very pretty to me and I thought it might be something nice. Um, so, Joni uh, Bonzoli says, hey Henry, could I use a, clo a clothes iron instead of a waffle iron? Oh, you mean like a regular, this kind of iron. I mean, it's a surface and it gets hot. I don't really see any reason you wouldn't, except for I would definitely make sure that you slab that thing down with butter because you don't want it sticking and then you want it to be nice and clean for whenever you iron your clothes. I don't iron my clothes because I rarely socialize. Uh, 2J2, this looks like a pancake, but I'm sure it'll turn, yeah. It's very similar, but uh, but it's gonna it's gonna definitely start taking a little bit more of a waffle situation. We've got five minutes. Maybe this is a good time because I haven't done this in a while uh, to... Uh... Oh, by the way, if you want to see what we're going to be making here, this is going to be the final product. Um, we've got some fresh strawberries that we're going to put on there. And I don't know if I have spinach like they do, but I can look. And um, But that's what we're going to be doing. But uh, maybe this would be a good time to go ahead and play a little bit of the Henry's Kitchen game. And then when we're done, we can flip our waffle. Henry's Kitchen game made by my friend Mark Cohen. Um, basically what you do is you just try to avoid onions. Oh boy, there's a situation with the sound there. Sometimes when that happens, I, I flip it. Um, this isn't exactly a, uh, a professional game yet. It's still in the, uh, beta, uh, testing series, but, um, okay. So I'm avoiding, uh, Delish. avoiding awesome onions nice. and rats and insects and stuff. I'm trying to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but in order to do so, I need my peanut nice. butter. And, and also, if the moderators don't mind um, putting this uh, the link to the game out there for everybody to have in case you want to play it at home. There's, some, there's been some pretty incredible high scores. But so I'm going around, I'm trying to get bread, jelly, and peanut butter. And once I've got all three of those things, that makes a sandwich. So you can see I've made one sandwich. Oh. I can't see the uh, the side of it. Nice. So normally I can, oh yeah, I can see. Jelly, I've got five. Sandwich Delish. made. Um, Delish. Woohoo! Yeah, Delish. <clears throat> Delish. Jelly, awesome. Sandwich Great. Nice. made. Jelly. So uh, I've got. Great, yeah. I got Delish. hit twice with the bad stuff. Delish. Nice. So uh, I only get one more, but you get a free life after you've made 30 sandwiches. Nice, which made. I, I'm not really doing pretty, very well on this particular game because I'm thinking about so much nice. with my waffle. But I wanted to give you guys an idea yeah. of what the game is. and awesome. It's free if you want to kill your time. Um, I have spent hours and hours doing this. Woohoo! Delish. Awesome. Delish. Uh... Okay, so you can see I've got 14 jelly, but I'm really low on peanut butter, so I'm going to start trying to catch up on peanut butter. Because that's the only way I'm making these sandwiches. I basically need a flood of peanut butter. Um, I won't not get the bread if I don't have to, but I'm really more on the hunt for peanut butter. Sandwich. And it's going well. Okay, Great. so I might actually make it to the free life at 30. Yeah. Awesome. Sandwich. Sandwich. Um, nice. Awesome. We at Henry's Kitchen Bread. Enterprises, Delish. which Great. is basically just me, uh, are always trying to think of uh, awesome. ways to develop um, gaming nice. technology yeah, that Bread. blows Bread. your mind. Bread. And also... Nice. Peanut butter made. Awesome. Um, Jelly. Peanut butter made. That improves Great. your life. 
Okay, Damn. so... Nice. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm smelling uh, something burning, so I'm going to stop playing at this point, which I, I kind of did anyway, but I'll put in my score. Oh, and all the scores are gone anyway, so... I, I think the scores are still there, but they're not working for me because I have to uh, I have to clear the cache or something like that. That's happened before. But anyway, um, that was a little bit of that. Uh, Cracks Wagon says, can I use aluminum foil to make my regular pan into a grill pan? I would think so. That's a, that's a creative way to try it. Okay, so, uh-oh, shit. This is burning. I uh, might have left it on a little too long there. Uh, I've got a fan here. So, okay, you want to make sure that the heat's a little bit lower than what I had it. But we want to flip this over. And it seems to be flipping pretty well. Oh, boy. All right, so... Yeah. First thing went wrong for the day. It looks like I put it, uh, I, I did it too warm. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put it on a very, very low heat. Oh, jeez. Very low heat. And I'm gonna try to salvage this thing. It's, it's a little burned on the top, but we can shave that okay. off. And uh, I'm, I'm going to put it on low, low. Um, let's do a song. Maybe this is a good time to do a song. Does anybody have any uh, music that they, they want to hear? Also, I better, I'm going to open the uh, door here. It's getting real smoky in here and I don't like it. I'm going to turn this off because it's starting to freak me out a little bit. Here, give me a second. I'm going to um, just give me a, a couple minutes here. I'm going to show you uh, one of my older Henry's Kitchen videos while I try to get some of the smoke out of the house. I'm just going to 
take one sheet and lay it across here, like so. Now I'm going to take another sheet so I can double up on the base. This one looks, it's kind of, actually, you know what, fuck it, we'll just use the one. Pour our cheese mixture into the middle. Add our imitation crab stick legs. Alright, now watch closely. I'm just going to very delicately pick up the two opposite corners here, like so. Join them at the top very carefully so as not to break it. And then we're going to pick the other sides up. Fold them in so it looks like a cherry blossom. Actually, you know what, let's just start again. So I'm going to take the opposite corners and I'm going to join them together. And then while I'm still holding them, I'm going to take the one side and fold it inward. So it looks like a beautiful blossoming flower. Hello, are you there? Testing. Um, uh, it, it, <laughs> I, I gotta get better at this, uh, okay, so you guys can hear me okay, okay, testing, um, all right, so, I don't know what happened, I, I put it on, uh, seven, which maybe was a little too hot, so I probably should go with the five next time, and things got pretty damn smoky, I had to put... Uh, my cat roast beef out on the balcony because I didn't want him to get uh, smoke inhalation. I have smoke inhalation apparently, so I'm, I'm feeling a little lightheaded, but uh, but we're gonna be okay because I what I'm doing is if you ever cook too much on one side for something that you have to flip, if you flip it, just try to cook a proportional amount less on the other side and they're both going to add up to the same amount of cookedness. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we got. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm not going to let this get me down. But uh, at least everything is safe the moment but let's go ahead and see what we have to work with here I've got a waffle that's very cooked on the one side but on the other side okay honestly doesn't look that bad oh geez okay uh, there's gonna be a lot of cleanup on this one unfortunately uh, let's go ahead and grab our strawberries um, let's see here. Ah, there's the fucking strawberries, man. Okay, here they are. Okay. I've got literally three strawberries, so I'm going to try to cut them up as best I can. Um, to make them look similar to what we have in our picture there. Strawberries are going to add a little bit of uh, nice sweetness to what you're doing here. Even though we did have sugar. Spread them around a little bit. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of our maple syrup. Um, you can get uh, fancy with the types of uh, syrup. And by the way, we will do some music in a little bit. I was almost uh, going to do it, but then the started getting worried about causing a fire or something. Uh, you can use any kind of syrup that you like. I like good old traditional maple, um, but a lot of People like to get fancy with things like boysenberry or blueberry syrup or whatever, but uh, 
Okay, so this is our waffle, and if you compare it to, so it doesn't necessarily look like the one they have, but uh, hey, as long as we don't look at the other side here, which is pretty bad, um, I'm gonna let that cool down, and maybe this would be. Uh, Maybe this would be a good time to do a song. Sorry if it's a little smoky in here. So start thinking about requests. Um, check, one, two. Testing. Um, yesterday by the Beatles. Yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away Wait. Yesterday All my troubles seem so far away Now I need a place to hide away Oh, I believe in yesterday Suddenly I'm not half the man I used to be there's some smoke that's hanging over me Oh, yesterday came suddenly Why she had to go, I don't know She wouldn't say I said something wrong Now I long for yesterday Yesterday, love was such an easy game to play. Now I need a place to hide away. Oh, I believe in yesterday. Ooh. That one took on kind of an extra meaning for me today. Uh, Tenacious D, no, I, I like Tenacious D, but I don't really know any of their songs, I don't think. Um, so, Alcoholic Gorilla wants me to play Wonderwall. Uh, I think I did that, a little bit of that, but... Today is gonna be the day that I turn all back to you. By now, I'm gonna somehow realize what I'm gonna do. Anybody feels the way I do about you now Cause all the world is up and there's a winding Maybe you can sing the lyrics at home And all the things and all the things are blinding All the world is in I'd like to say to you but I don't know how Cause maybe There's like so many parts uh, let's see what, what other ones. Um, Mr. Rager says, uh, Angel Thump. Don't know that one. Um, okay. Thanks, Twitch Loves Child Labor. Um, let's see here. Jess, uh, let's see. Brother Man Bill, I, I still got to go look at it. You know what we're going to do is I have a Discord, and I'm going to set up a special room in the Discord uh, where you can just request songs the night before, and then that way I'll be able to take a look at them. And then, um, nobody's birthday. Maybe we could send this one out to, to Caitlin, who's struggling with a birthday situation right now. So It's nobody's birthday. No need for candles on the cake It's nobody's birthday It was just a big mistake It's nobody's birthday No need to uncork the wine Cause it's nobody's birthday but mine Uh, 
Respect by Aretha Franklin. That was Miss Butterworth. I'll try. Um... What you want, baby? I can't. <laughs> no, that's not a. I don't think that's a song for for me. It it sounds uh, weird. Um, I'm really better at the sad uh, kind of more crooning types of songs. Um, let's see here. Uh, somebody said, can I play Eruption? I think so. I just need a pick. But uh, we can do the acoustic version here. <laughs> Ravel's Pavan. Thanks, Russell. I'm going to have to learn that one, but that's beautiful. There's two. There's there's Ravel's Pavan for a dead infant and one for a dead princess, and they're both very good. Uh, Rammstein. Uh, CCR is a great re request. Maybe I could try to get that for next time. Uh, all right, I'm going to do one more song here, and then we're going to move on to eating our waffle. Um... This is a song that was big in the 80s, which was the time that I grew up, and uh, I always thought it'd be interesting to, to sing it from the perspective of a male, because it's originally written by a female, or for a female, but... Just when I saw her standing there I tried to speak, but didn't dare Something inside whispered to me boy you gotta do this carefully that's when she started to walk away and that was all she needed to say that's when I knew I wanted her to but I'd have to do some breaking through cause she's so shy she's so shy that's sort of a dance number um, okay well I think it's time for us to go ahead and uh, dig into our brunch here I hope you guys had a good brunch today I've certainly you know we've had our challenges here with the meal but I, I will say that it uh, seems to have been salvaged what I need now is a fork And again, just this is what we were aiming for. And I'm not going to say this is terrible. As a matter of fact, this part looks pretty awesome. That bite came dangerously close to the uh, the burned part, but I don't know, in a weird way, I, I feel like I might have invented something here because a lot of times amazing dishes are made because of mistakes in the kitchen. A lot of people don't know. Hey, thanks, Codex. Codex of, of Dye Fed. It's a cool name. It sounds like... Uh, like Conan the Barbarian, Barbarian or something. But, uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, a lot of people don't know about a dish called the Tarte Tatan, which accidentally was made because a couple of nuns 
in a nunnery were trying to make apple pie and they dropped it on the floor or something and picked it up and put it upside okay. down put it in the oven for way too long and it burned and the people in the uh, tavern or wherever they were wherever they were serving I guess it would have been a nunnery that had like a restaurant and they um, they loved it and it turned out to be called the tart tatan and it's one of the most expensive dishes you can get to this day so I don't know maybe I invented something here but I want to show you that when I dig into this I'm gonna be just trying to get the top because what we did was we cooked through, so we, we definitely burned this side of it, there's no doubt about it. But this part actually got cooked because of okay. how hot the heat was. AJK8000, thanks for joining us and subscribing. Um, so I'm just gonna take the top because you really don't want that burned part, it's gonna flavor your whole bite. But if you can avoid that, you know what? You have not such a bad brunch here. Um, a little coffee will take that little burned edge part off. Let's see if anybody has any questions here. Um, I'm trying to drag it to the bottom so it gets into real time. What's my favorite cake? I think this might be. Um, tough day in the kitchen. This, this wasn't as bad as some of the ones that we've had in the past. Um, what am I gonna name my new creation? I don't know, it's certainly, I certainly wouldn't necessarily call this a traditional waffle. Maybe we could call it something like the uh, Okay. The waffleette, or, or maybe it, it could be something that, maybe waffle brulee. Um, waffle brulee, I like that. I'm not sure what brulee means. Alexa, what does brulee mean? Here's something I found on the web. According to cooksinfo.com, brulee means burnt. Burnt, okay, so... We could call it the waffle brulee. I like that. It sounds very French. Um, so, uh, Singer Vamper says, how did I become so good at cooking? And it's hard for me to answer that question without sounding immodest, but um, 10 years ago, I was uh, very okay. depressed. And uh, thanks, Lord Dick on Man Woody. Um, I was very depressed. I was drinking a lot, probably more than I should have been, and I still am. And uh, but I was also uh, depressed from a breakup, and I was broke, and I still am. But uh, I was having a hard time, and I still am. But uh, ten years ago, I uh, went on YouTube and saw this girl teaching how to make asparagus, and just my life changed overnight. I was like, I need to do this. This is what I need to do. I not just to make asparagus, but I need to teach people how to make food. And I started doing it, and it felt better. And I'll be honest with you, uh, Sanger Vamper. The first three years of it, I really didn't know what I was doing. But I've been doing it 11 years now, and um, I I just I feel like I finally found something that I could do. I was never good at sports or math or uh, school or anything except for playing guitar I guess but that was just sort of a fluke but uh, and you can't make money doing that but uh, but suddenly the kitchen called to me and then I realized that my job was going to be that I was going to be a kitchen explainer um, so I appreciate that uh, Sanger Vamper uh, so Hoi Poloi asks, uh, should I throw my waffle iron away now? No. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to say this probably would have worked out better if we had used the waffle iron. I'm sorry to say. Hey, while, while I have uh, your attention here, I uh, would like to say some thank yous. Um, when I started uh, doing Twitch a couple of months ago, okay. 
Thanks, Steel Horse. Um, I, uh, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, and so many people uh, came out and, and just offered to help, and they have been helping to moderate and also give me technical advice. Uh, Bumblevision uh, told me uh, how to uh, cook the waffle without a waffle iron, and I think he did a great job with that. So uh, for the moderators, um, I want to thank Dingo Bop, Fawcan, Dom Beef, Hottest Bear, Do Dingle, Doc Goggy, Dr. Flanges, and other people that have helped here and there, Bakus, Daisy Blossom, Melon95, Pilskman. Always like to thank Nim, who gave me a spot on his stream about six months ago and introduced me to the whole platform and to the audience. And also Bumblevision, LGX, and Sir Doom, who've been wonderful about uh, technical help. And um, my old buddy, Bill Larkin Music, um, that's his channel. And uh, he's just one of the best music uh, improvisers uh, that I've ever known. And, uh, and he was doing Twitch, and he was very helpful in, in letting me know uh, certain things. So if you have a chance to check out Bill Larkin Music, that would be great. And uh, people that I don't know that have helped a lot are Forsen and Moon Moon, who uh, are streamers with a lot of views, who have sent a lot of people to the Henry's Kitchen uh, channel, and I appreciate that. And um, and uh, Shane Yes, who uh, I, I want to thank everybody for making clips of this, and, and Shane Yes actually uh, has been putting them on Reddit, and, and um, they've had. Uh, you know, I think one of them's got like a hundred thousand views or something like that. But um, so anyway, I just uh, I think it's important to be appreciative, and uh, I'm hoping that at some point my Twitch experience uh, gets such that I can help other people as well. Thanks, Codex of Die Fed. Upcoming uh, Marvel movie. No. Okay. So uh, anyway. There you have it. This is the waffle brulee. Sure, we didn't make a waffle that looks traditional, but we invented our own thing. And I think that's important. I'm gonna have another awesome bite of this. And I'm gonna, somehow or another, it's still coming off tasting burned. Maybe that's because of the top. But, uh, Gonna, yeah, so I think that the top part picked up some of that burned thing that was happening on the bottom. So I don't know. I might not eat this whole thing, but you can tell how it would be delicious if it was just a little less cooked. So, but. I always tell people, and this is a very serious note here, you have to eat the food you cook in the kitchen. Not only do you not want to waste food, especially if you're cooking meat, because that means animals died so that you could make your dinner and you don't want to waste it. You want that animal to be like, hey, at least I went to feeding somebody and giving them nutrients uh, that gets into a whole weird thing but what I'm saying is that you have to eat the food that you cook or else who else is gonna do it I think that's a good place to close so um, as always thanks everybody I hope you had a great Sunday or I hope you're having a good Sunday depending on where in the world you are and I uh, just want to thank everybody uh, for joining us and again if you have uh, song recommendations the discord will probably be the place that will do that and then I'll try to learn them for the next day because um, it's always important to do something while you're waiting for shit to cook okay everybody enjoy your your Sunday and enjoy your week thank you <laughs>